everyone, I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars. And today we are going to talk about buyer's remorse. It can happen to the best of us. So we're gonna talk about some ways that we can avoid that happening because that really <laughs> feels terrible like we've made bad decisions when it does happen. So if you want to live frugally, and I'm assuming you do, is why you are here, and you want to save money, um, it, it can be tough. We live in a world right now where it is so easy to spend money. So if it's hard to save and easy to spend, what can we do? So I have five tips on what we can do to try to avoid that buyer's remorse. The first tip is to identify your thoughts and emotions about money. Yes, I know it is some homework to do, but we should not be using shopping as a way to, uh, to cope. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes we use shopping when we are stressed, when we're sad, when we're anxious, when we're mad. We do it for a lot of reasons other than the purpose that it's intended to get the things that we need. So if we use it when we're lonely and all of those other things that can influence us to go to the store, to be around other people, it can cause us to spend more money than we want to spend on things that we weren't even thinking about buying. And we may be using it to avoid those feelings and distract ourselves. So that is a very important homework piece to look at is the reasons why you are shopping when you have that urge. Because distracted shopping can absolutely cause buyer's remorse. The second tip is not to use shopping as a hobby. I think it was early 80s when I was in high school that I really noticed that girls were starting to go in groups and go shopping on the weekends and do that as a hobby or as that a way to hang out together. That socializing with friends, that need can be met in so many other ways than a way that you have to spend money. We need to turn to activities or other ways that we can enjoy those relationships without spending money on things that we weren't really looking for. Maybe music, taking walks, going to park together, sitting on a bench, spending time just hanging out, watching your favorite movies, anything you wanna do socially, you can do without going to the mall or going out to look for a new outfit. I always find when I go shopping for clothes with other people, I have a tendency to buy things I don't really want because they will tell me they look good on me or I should get it. So I prefer to shop alone and that way I can stay focused and I can decide for myself if it's something that I really love and I really want to add to my wardrobe. The third tip is not to believe everything you think. That one is kind of a funny way of saying Am I really wanting this or is my mind just telling me I should get it? Kind of like that friend that tells you, oh, you should get that, but it's not really your style, it's not really your color, you don't really like it, but they tell you that it looks good on you. And sometimes our mind can do that to ourselves. So the best way to avoid that happening is to shop with intention. Go with a list, know what you need, know what you're looking for. If you're looking for clothes and you're looking for something that's going to match a specific outfit, then know what you have in mind, what color you need, what style, what fabric. Know that before you go. So shop with intention and then shop with attention. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to the prices, the sales tags. Pay attention to everything around you that is influencing you to grab this or that without you really putting any thought into it. Because how many times have we gone shopping for something and came out with more than we intended? I have known people that will shop 
hide it in their trunks, wait until their significant other goes to work, and then sneak it in the house. So if we are buying things and sneaking it into the house, then we're probably not buying things with intention or attention. The fourth tip is to respect your things. And I can't remember where I read this at. I don't know um, if it was an exercise on some self-help thing that I was looking at or if it was a Marie Kondo idea. But to respect our things, this may sound silly, but walk into your house and look at a bureau, a cabinet, a stand, look at something that you don't normally pay attention to. And then think about what is inside of it, what you're using it for, are you really making use of it? And then think about that object having feelings. And I told you this was silly, but it's a way for our minds to respect our things and realize that what we have is sufficient many, many times. So if you think about that object and it's sitting there watching you walk by it every single day, you're not paying any attention to it, you're not using it, you're not looking at what's stored inside of it, and then it watches you bring other things into the house and it's still sitting there being ignored. Putting it in that perspective can make you realize that what we have maybe isn't being used to its full potential, and what we have is more than likely sufficient. And the fifth tip is to stop beating ourselves up over our decisions. If we look at our choices and we analyze the choices that we've made, we become changeable in the future. We can't change the choices we've made in the past, so that buyer's remorse doesn't always make us feel good, but looking at that situation and analyzing that going forward can help us make better choices. So buyer's remorse isn't always a bad thing. And just remember, it's not too late when you're shopping to have some of those thoughts come into your head and just walk out of the store and just leave the store. It's, there's no shame in that. Just walking out and leaving and saying, you know what? I don't really need to be here today. There's nothing I really need. This window shopping thing, it can get you into trouble. So find some other way to meet that need that has taken you to the store today to browse when you don't really need anything. That will help your buyer's remorse. Or if you're somebody that shops online, Shut that website down and find something else to satisfy that need. If you're looking online and you don't really need anything and you're seeing things and you say, wow, that looks really cool, you probably weren't shopping with intention and attention. So just shut that browser down and walk away just like you were in a store. I hope that this helps and I hope that you understand that buyer's remorse can actually be a triggering point in our head to make us changeable and that's not a bad thing. So I hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching today. Oh, yeah.